Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Construction Tech Tuesday here at Keller Pacific. I am April McCall. I'm an application specialist, a certified instructor, and I also do tech support and some other random things around here. All right, so today's webinar is going to be focused around estimating with Bluebeam Review. Um, some of you may have seen some of this already in a previous training or webinar, and maybe it's completely brand new to you. Um, we're going to go ahead and do questions, so at the end we'll take the questions. If you have questions during it, feel free to type it in the chat, and we'll, we'll go through the questions at the very, very end. All right, so uh, before the time of the digital world, you know, there were a paper and pencil workflows. Many still use paper and pencil. I personally was never an estimator, but I remember walking into my estimator's office and seeing her uh, with the little pinwheel on her desk and then her, her note sheet and her scratch paper and her calculator. So review is replacing that process, okay? Um, and then, you know, I would see her put into an Excel sheet, and so that's already like three or four steps. And so we're moving into this digital era. So I'm going to show you guys how we would do that in Bluebeam Review. And this is going to be a short and sweet webinar, so it won't take too much of your time today. I don't have a lot of PowerPoint slides for you, so I won't be boring you with PowerPoint slides. All right. Let's figure out how to get to our next slide. Okay. Here we go. So estimation best practice. Obviously, there's a lot of setup that's involved. Actually, there's not a lot of setup. So it's the interface, the custom columns, the custom tools. Once you set these things up, you're golden. So you won't have to do it again. It's really easy. Once, once that's all set up, you work on your measurement tools and then take your estimate into either a PDF summary report or we have this really cool thing called quantity link. And I know some of you guys are just going to love that. All right. So takeoff and quantity link. Just want to mention that quantity link is an extreme feature only. So with Bluebeam Review, there are three additions. There's standard, CAD, and extreme. If you guys are interested in getting a spreadsheet on what the differences are, with the CAD edition, it's great for CAD managers, people that are using Revit. Did you know you can print a 3D PDF from Revit and open it up in Bluebeam Review? That's rad. You can even put markups on it. All right, so let's focus on what we're going to talk about today. Um, this is, doesn't just apply to electrical, plumbing, and flooring. You can also do estimating for steel. You can also do estimating for architecture. There's a lot of different options. I'm not going to take a lot of your time, so we're just going to focus on electrical, plumbing, and flooring for today. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over into Bluebeam Review. All right, so Here's the interface. Uh, I want to show you here that I've set up this profile, okay, quantity takeoff. Uh, things that are part of this profile, here's the tool set. We got electrical takeoff, custom flooring takeoff, and we got plumbing takeoff. We're going to talk about how to actually set some of these up. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is show you how to create a custom electrical takeoff, and then we'll talk about um, some of the plumbing takeoffs too. So I'm going to jump over to one of my sheets using the thumbnails tab, okay, and I'm just going to kind of go over to one of these sheets here. This is a sheet of conduit, so it's got a conduit plan laid out, and I'm just going to show you how right now I have one run of conduit. So how did I get this tool in this tool set? So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to add and create a two-inch run of conduit, and we're going to customize it. So that's the first thing you guys are going to learn is how to create a custom um, tool. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our tools, and because this is going to be uh, a conduit, we want to use the PolyLink tool here. So I'm just going to click here. Um, I have a little tip for you. So if you hold down the shift key, that will make your takeoff perfectly straight. And that works also 
with uh, the highlighter, the pen tool. It also works if you're creating, uh, you want to make a rectangle a square or an ellipse a circle. That shift key will do that for you. All right, so I'm going to double click to end. And at the initial start of the takeoff, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So this is where the customization comes in. So I've got this little piece of poly length. And this is the dynamic properties bar up here. So for any of you out there that don't know how to make these customizations or uh, what this bar along here is, this is the dynamic properties bar. Now the properties for this takeoff are also available over here uh, in the properties gear. Okay, so the same type of properties you're seeing in this list are also available along the top. So I'm going to take advantage of this dynamic properties bar. One of the first things I'm going to do is change the subject of that poly length. And I'm going to call this 2-inch conduit. And I'm going to make the label say the same thing, 2-inch conduit. Now, this is something that's optional. There is the ability to add layers in here, OK? If you don't know what a layer is, let me quickly explain to you. A layer allows you to control the visibility of your markups on a sheet. So notice how I've already created two layers. I created those layers by adding Create New Layer. Hey, imagine that. And I created a lighting fixture layer and a conduit layer. That means as I'm placing these um, takeoffs, it's automatically placing it on a layer. And I will show you how to manage your layers. So uh, some of you may want to take advantage of that. All right, so I'm just going to put this on a conduit layer. And I'm going to choose to add this to a custom tool chest. But before I do, I want to make it look pretty, OK? So. I'm going to go along the top and I'm going to say, I want this particular takeoff to be a dark blue. OK, line style, something you can change. I foresee in the future being able to create custom line styles for takeoff. It's not currently a feature, but I'm really hoping it is soon. All right, next thing you could do is change the font. Maybe you have a favorite font. Maybe you want to change the text color. OK, there's some styles like bold, underline, and some other customizations that you can go to. But this really just this does it for me, personally. Um, another thing you may not want, so notice how this takeoff right here has the individual segments of the length, and this one does not. You may not want a bunch of text on your takeoff sheet. So the way you would control these uh, two objects, so one is the label and one is the individual segments, is going into the markup properties. I'm sorry, the regular properties here. We'll talk about the markup properties in a minute. Um, so show segmented values. You may want to clean it up like that. And you may actually not even want to have this two-inch conduit and the total length. This is this length here is the total length of this piece and this piece. You may want to turn that off also and have it just be blank. Because where the real location of all this information and the length is going to be down in the markups list, which is, I'm going to show you that next. All right, so we got this takeoff looking good. This is how we want it. And we want to continue to use it. We can go over here. There's many ways to add this to the tool set. I can do it this way. I can right click on this. I can go down to Add Tool Set, and I can add it to any one of these tool sets that I've already created. Now, another place that you can do this is um, in the Recents tools. Now, I have my Recents tools turned off. Okay, so right now I have a lock on all my tool sets because I have my tool sets stored in a, in a, a different drive location. So I need to turn off the lock. Just FYI, if any of you ever import a tool set from another location, probably from someone else that created it, um, it's going to put the lock on and, and you may need to, to unlock it. All right, so you can see that it's been added into the electrical takeoff. Right now it's in um, something called, if I right click on this, you can see it's in properties mode, 
or drawing mode, and I want to put it in properties mode. Notice how the, the icon changes. I'm going to pull this up here just to keep it kind of organized. Put it right up there with the other runs of conduit. Now I can go back in, take the two inch, go over here, and start adding in my takeoff. Double clicking to end. All right, so that was just a simple little takeoff that I wanted to show you how to input. Let me show you how to make changes to that. And what happens when you're in this situation over here where you have a drop or a rise? Okay, so let me show you how to add that in there. So we'll just say we're starting right here, we're moving right along, and again, I'm going to hold that shift key down. I know my resolution is kind of off a little, so my measurement numbers are super tiny. All right, so I'm just going to go from there. I'm going to make a click. I'm going to make another click. Whoops, probably would help if I went up there a little. All right, and then double click to end. Now, my suggestion here is everywhere there is a fitting or a transition, that doesn't matter if it's plumbing or conduit or what it is, I recommend putting a click in here, okay, and I'm going to show you why when I start doing the plumbing takeoff. What I do need to point out is this. Over here is a drop, and over here may be a rise. So in order to calculate the, dry, the, the rise and the drop, you need to go over into the properties, right over here in the measurement properties. I told you guys earlier I would show you this. Um, we can set the depth. We can set the square footage. Um, but I really want to add a drop in here. So maybe um, the rise is uh, 13 feet, and then the drop is 10 feet. So this is where I would put in 23 feet. Okay, now you didn't actually see the calculation happen because I happened to turn off the label for this. So maybe I want to see that pop up. So I'm going to turn that back on. So I turn the caption on. You could see that my total length is 35 feet, 2 inches and 9 30 seconds, and the rise drop is 23 feet. Now the reason why I wanted to show you how to turn that caption off is because as you're laying out your, your takeoff in the sheet, you don't want to see a bunch of this everywhere because then your sheet's going to get bogged down with labels. So show caption is the go-to to turn that on and off right there. Okay? What's next? All right, let's go down here. I want to show off the markups list for just a second. And in my markups list, I have some custom columns. I'm going to show you how to really beef up that run of conduit right now. If I go over to my tool set and I look at the three-quarter inch conduit, now you're going to need to do these custom columns before you add this to the tool set. And here's where I'm going with this. If I click on this three-quarter inch conduit and then I go into the properties, of that tool, and I scroll down here, and again, I apologize for my graphics. They're just a little off. But you can see that I've created all these custom columns, and they're all appearing under the custom area, or custom column columns, whatever you want to call that. So you can see that the price per foot, and you, some of you out there that are electrical, you may laugh at me, uh, 75 cents a foot. I don't really know if that's what it costs, but that's what I would like it to cost. So 75 cents a foot is what we're going with here. Okay? If I go over and I add this three-quarter inch conduit, watch what's going to happen down here in my markups list. I'm going to start right here, hold down my shift key. Click right around there. It also might help you guys when you're doing your takeoff to turn on your crosshairs. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. I'm just going to go all the way up here, and I'm going to double click to end. Okay, so notice how this one I've chosen a different line style for the three-quarter inch. But look what else happens. 
right down here, 75 cents, and I've also created a total cost column. Now that doesn't mean that I can't manually go in and put this information in, but if you build this stuff into your tools, you're saving time. Like, I don't want to go back into my markup list and double click in here and modify it. No, I want to build that right into the tool. Okay, so let me show you, let me show you how to get that into the tool. So you guys watched me create this two inch conduit right here, and I know it's a three quarters inch. This is just all for show and tell. Right here, I have the two inch conduit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it in my tool set, then I'm gonna go over to the properties, and I'm going to scroll down to the price per foot. And, uh, okay, well, you know, we could do it that way too. Let's just say, I don't know, $1.75 sounds good to me, right? Now, as I go in and I start adding the 2-inch, double-clicking to end, and voila, $1.75 gives you the total cost. Pretty rad, right? Now, there's a couple other things that I'm going to show you with takeoff, but I'm saving it for when we do the plumbing takeoff. Okay, what's next, guys? Oh, you may be wondering, well, how did you do those custom columns? Let me show you how those custom columns are set up, okay? So right over here in the markup list dropdown, we have the column, column, and then we have manage columns. So I'll show off these, um, how these two columns were created here. So you would go over into custom columns, and you would say add. And when you do, now rather than me adding one, I'm just going to say modify. This is where you're going to put in uh, the name of the column. Notice how I have a cost per fixture and I have a total fixture cost. Okay, so you could do multiple, multiple, multiple custom columns here. Price per foot is just a number, but it's related to a currency, and I like it to include the totals, and this including the totals is just how it's going to display in my markup split. Once you say okay, now here's a little thing to keep in mind. You need to have this column created before you can do a totals, and this is why. So when we go into total cost, we're going to see that total cost is a formula right here. So we go into the modify, and this again, is the same thing as clicking add. You're going to go up here, give it a name, and make it a formula rather than a number. Now in the expression, we have length by price per foot. If the price per foot column was not created first, you're not going to get that as an option. Now, another recommendation that I have is this. Start typing in your expression, like length or area, and when the drop-down comes, this is my recommendation, because during a few of my training classes, we were creating custom columns, and one of the students was like, hey, April, this is not working. I don't get it. And all we really had to do was go back in and click on this expression. Now, some other people just typed in area, and it worked. But Rather than sparing yourself the, the hassle of going back and fixing it, I recommend clicking on it right here and then populating it like that. And then, of course, going into form, format here and picking currency, picking your decimals, and obviously it's dollars, but if you live somewhere else, you may want to choose you know, your currency. And then, again, include totals. I get this is just something that's going to be included in the markup list. I can show, you, show it off later in a bit. Anyways, we say okay. Oh, well, there went that. Let's do this. There we go. Double click. And then we say okay. Now, because these custom columns are specific to the PDF that you're working on, you're going to definitely want to hit save to profile. If you don't save to profile, your custom columns, the next time you open up the next project, they're not going to be there, okay? So you definitely want to save this and make it part of the profile. And remember at the beginning of the profile, 
I went up in here into the review men menu and I showed you that we're using the quantity takeoff profile. Okay, moving on guys. Next it's time to show off some flooring takeoff. So some area takeoff. I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the sheet. All right, so for that, I'll go over to one of these other sheets I have in these files right over here. Here we go. Coming. There we go. Okay, so this is another type of takeoff that you can perform. It's not, the customizations are not limited to color and, um, color style and text and font. But um, when you're doing an area, a custom area takeoff, you can actually add a hatch in there. And I really like that for some reason. I just think it's adorable. So um, to the tool set, over here, we have, we have a little bit different layout here. So notice how the subject of my conduit is the actual size of the conduit. And then in the label is the conduit. This is what you guys seen when I laid it out on the plan and then I went in and turned it off. Now with flooring, I'm using a little bit of a different ap approach. I would like my subject to all be flooring. And a little later when I show you how to do the quantity link to Excel and the PDF summary report, you'll see it'll make sense why I want it to all be flooring here in the subject. And then the label, is going to be the label, so what you're seeing over here. And I've also, for my flooring takeoff, I've also built in a cost. So as I click and I drag, and I add in the different, um, it's so tiny. As I add in the different takeoffs here, oh look, I have no cost in my concrete takeoff. Let's go ahead and assign one. Going into the properties, Scrolling down, of course, I'm going to need to take the lock off. Going into the properties. Okay, now. Let's try this again. There we go. It's having an attitude today. It's only Tuesday. Uh, okay, so what? Dollar per square foot for concrete? Let's do something a little crazier. Let's do five. Five dollars per square foot. Then we can go in, add this, just like this, and voila. Now, that's using the click and drag method right there. Now maybe you have an odd shaped room. One of the other things you can do is click, 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 and double click. That was a lot of clicks right there. So let me show you this really cool tool, and I always get really excited uh, when I show people this. It's called Dynamic Fill. All right, so what happens when you have a space like this and it's rounded? Do, are you going to go in and go click, click, click? No, no, you're not going to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to go up to the Tools drop down. You're going to go over to Measurement, and we're going to use something called Dynamic Fill. And I was so excited when I learned this tool right here. Um, super exciting. Okay, so we can literally pick any space. Let's just go right over here. I'm going to minimize some of this stuff to give us a better idea of what we're working with. Okay, so we have this odd shaped room here. And in this room, I would like to put some tile in here to match the room right next to it. Now I just want to say when using this feature, there's something called a boundary size. Now the only time you're going to need to use this boundary is when there is an opening into the next room. So like right across this door here, I'll go ahead and do both of these spaces. I don't need a boundary line here because it's enclosed, but if you have an area that's not enclosed, you'll need one for here. So you go over to the fill bucket your really cool little magic wand pops up and you just hold it down and start to nudge it over. 
and let's fill in that little space and that space and that space and right over here. All right. So when I was first learning this tool, I thought like this was it. Like, yeah, I did it. You didn't actually do anything quite yet. So with the dynamic fill, there's things that you can do. You can create a new space, a polygon, an area, a poly length, a perimeter, and a volume tool. So for now, I'm just going to show you uh, there is a default. So if I were to leave this set to the default, it would just put a regular um, standard area takeoff. Okay? Uh, but since I have a custom tool set, set I'm just going to click on the flooring. Now, for tile, I'm going to put tile in here. You will know that you are actually doing or performing one of these options when you see it highlighted in blue. And that's kind of like a standard. I noticed that when I, when I, do, when I use Revit too, uh, the tool that I've selected will be highlighted in blue. All right, so you haven't actually done anything until you hit that apply button, then you hit apply, and it puts tile in that room. Oh, it's so amazing. I know you guys love that. All right. If you have an open space like this, you're going to need to go in here and you're going to need to add a boundary line. I like to keep my boundary line at a very minimum. There's some other color options here, but it's like really, you don't need to change the color. All right, so I just want to point out that the edge of that circle, I think we would call that the quadrant part of that, is, whoops, really? Okay, let's clear that. Whoops, clear all. Just kidding. Here we go. Boundary line, click. I'm going to hold down that shift key again and double click to add that boundary line. Then I'm going to use my fill bucket and I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in the space. All right, notice how that boundary line just stopped it dead in its tracks? That's what you want. All right, let's go ahead and put tile in there also since we have tile all around us. Okay, tile, come on now. There we go. And apply and voila. All right, so that's another type of takeoff that you can perform. Okay, so what's next? Plumbing, I'm going to show you guys plumbing, then we're going to create some reports and put this all into a nice package, and you guys are going to love that part because that's really where it's happening, right? At the end of the day, you're going to create a report, and that's what you're going to do your estimates off of. Okay, let's focus on one of the plumbing sheets. I'm going to go back over to the Thumbnails tab. We're going to go into sheet P1.1.2. Now here is a sheet here that already has quite a bit of takeoff. So I told you I was going to show you a few more things that I recommend when doing a, a takeoff at this level right here. So we have some 6-inch, we have some 4-inch, we have some 3-inch, et cetera, et cetera. We have some rise, we have some drop. All right, let's focus back over here into the tool set for a minute and go down into our plumbing takeoff. Now, one of the things you're going to notice that's different between my electrical takeoff and my plumbing takeoff are the subjects and the labels. Now, with 3-quarter inch conduit, you're only going to get three-quarter inch conduit. But with medium pressure or gas or waste or hot water or chilled water, there's very many different sizes in this. So I've created a custom column specific to um, this uh, object here or this takeoff. Sorry, I don't know what the heck I'm saying right now. Um, anyways, for example, um, storm drain we're going to go ahead and put some 6-inch storm drain in here. We're just going to kind of start right here, click, and then going up. Now, remember I said earlier, anywhere there's a transition or a takeoff, you're going to want to make another click, another click, and then we're going to go up here, and we're going to double click to end. So here's why I had you click at each 
particular piece of takeoff. So right here I have six, six, and then I have four. Now if I click on this plumbing takeoff here, you can see the little grips or the nodes, whatever you want to call them, that I've added at each transition. So the functionalities of these particular grips, well, one, you can drag it and modify the length, not what we want to do. But if I right click in this segment between this grip and this grip, like this, right click, I may want to split that off and make it its own. Come on. Split it. There we go. Now I can specify in my markups list the piece that's four inch. So let's click on this particular piece here. Okay, let's go down to our markups list. And over here, I have a column that I created called type diameter. I can go in here and say four. This piece is four, four inch. This piece right here is six inch. Okay, and so that's how we would do that with the plumbing takeoffs. And when these were built, I didn't put any costs associated in these. Um, the reason why is because there may be a different cost for a different size. So for this particular size, I mean, it's really all going back into how you want to build your tools. I think it would be a little ridiculous if you had, you know, I don't even know how many different sizes of storm drain there are, but I imagine it starts around 2 inch and it goes somewhere up to 8 inch or maybe even bigger. In your tool set, you don't want to have... 2 inch storm drain, 3 inch storm drain, 4 inch storm drain, et cetera, et cetera. So you will use your markups list to work with you. So maybe like the price per foot for 6 inch storm drain is, I don't know, I'm going to make something up so some of you may be like, no way. So $6 a foot for the 6 inch and we'll just pay um, for this portion right here. So there's a little bit of manual work that you would have to do with this. But that's okay because then I'm thinking back to my estimator at my old job, you know, writing this on a set of plans, using a calculator, taking it into Excel sheets. So you can already see the benefits of using Bluebeam Review to do your takeoff. Let's just say from this point on, now I know there's a rise and drop in here. Same thing as when we did the conduit. I can go over into the measurement properties, scroll down, and I can add a drop. Maybe this goes down 20 feet. Come on. There we go. All right, so then it puts the total length, the rise and the drop, showing you it's going down 20 feet. Um, another thing you can do is um, on this particular takeoff here, or any takeoff, here's another functionality I would like to show you. If you right-click over here at the end, Maybe you want to pick up where you left off. You could say resume storm drain and continue on and do some more takeoff and then double clicking to end. So that's an important thing on why I recommend um, putting a little grip at each transition and then you can go back and split off the segment that you need to split off. Um, if not, then it's just sitting there. It's, it's no big deal. Um, then I can proceed to go in here and go back into my storm drain. And I can click right here. Uh, one other thing to point out here. You have some options down here. Um, this is called your status bar. When you install 2018 or 2019 out of the box, the status bar is turned off. So let me show you how um, to turn this on. One of the things that you could do is turn a grid on. Uh, you could snap to the grid, and you could also snap to your markup. Sometimes, um, sorry, snap to content or snap to markup. Sometimes these accidentally get turned on with your F7 um, or 8. I had a guy one day call me up and be like, April, my mouse is jumping all around. I can't draw a straight line. It's going all crazy. And I said, check your status bar. One of your snap buttons may be turned on. And we, he did just that, and he was like, oh, thank you. I was going crazy. My mouth was just jumping all around. Um, okay, so how do you turn the status bar on down here? Uh, you would go up to the tools, drop down, toolbars, 
status bar. If you're a shortcut person like myself, you could just type F8. Um, the other thing that it has down here is reuse markup and sync your two screens. So when you're splitting your screen and you're looking at two documents side by side, you could do the split screen function. Okay, so what else do I have on the agenda for you guys today? Just, um, how to add a diameter to markups list. Oh, one other thing. Guess what else I created? I created a conduit column. So just to kind of jump back over here for a second, I'm going to go back to the sheet where I have the conduit on. This is another type of custom column that I have. If I click on this piece of uh, takeoff, you could see that I have a drop-down option here, PVC or EMT. So this is another um, type of custom column that you can create. It's called a choice column. So you have the choice. You have the choice, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So let's go ahead and go down to the markups list and start talking about um, some of the summary reports. Oh, no, do this. Hold on, let's go back here. Hey, count tool. How can I forget about the count tool? Okay, so we have visual and search and count. Guess what you could do? We can literally go in and perform counts using something called visual search. Now this works really good uh, when an document is uh, printed from directly from Revit or a plugin. If this is a scan document, you're going to have to run something called OCR, Optical Character Recognition. Um, OCR is something that comes with the Extreme Edition, and I'm going to be honest with you, it works better some days than others, and I think that has to do with um, uh, the pixelation or the density of the scan. So the better the scan and the higher quality of the scan, the better your chances are. But I just recommend printing it from PDF, uh, printing it from a plugin to PDF. That's going to be your best bet. So let's take a look at that visual search and count and how we can use that to do some takeoffs. We're going to go ahead and go over to this very busy lighting sheet over here. And we're going to take a little look around. we got all these different lighting fixtures. Now, one of the things you can do is go up to the tools, go to the measurements, and go down to count, and say one, two, three, four. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Some qualities of documents, depending on their scan, you're going to have to do that. Um, but one of the things you can do is a feature called search. So right over here on the left panel access, I go over to search, pulls up a window that looks like this. Two types of searches we can do. We can do a text search. So I could literally type in any text word that I want to do. This works great for spec sheets. Or I can do a visual search. Okay. These are the two little options here. So with visual search, we're going to do a rectangle. We're going to search for a couple different lighting fixtures, and then I'm going to show you how to create a custom lighting fixture count tool, because I think that's important too, right? So we're going to say get rectangle. When you use get rectangle, I recommend it be a nice, clean rectangle or a, a nice, clean uh, image of the image that you're searching for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my thumbnail tab, go over to my general notes and symbol sheet. Okay, I'm going to go to F10C, make a highlight around there like that. Go back to my search, but before I do, jump back over to the page that we want to do this on. And voila. So that is the image that we're going to search for on this page right here. There are some options for doing this. There's current document, current page, all open documents, recent and folders. I'm going to search just on this current page. You could do the whole document at once 
it's up to you. This is something that you're going to be doing trial by error. I personally would do this just page per page. Okay, there is a sensitivity bar. Now, having this set too low, you may not pick up every single lighting fixture. Having it set too high, you may pick up some stuff that don't belong in the group. This is going to be something also that you're going to be like trial by error. You're going to have to test it out with your documents and your symbols. Again, apologizing for the graphics here. There's some other options when searching, like if you want to search for rotated objects, uh, absolutely we do. And then our list is going to generate here, so we just click search. And you can't see it, again, because of my graphics, but it's giving you a percentage of what it's finding. So we're just going to give that a few minutes. Almost there, guys. All right, here we go. So we have our list, and this is what it's found. Here is my recommendation for you. I'm going to just scroll down here. Let's do this first. Let's check them all off. And let's go down and deselect the ones that don't, don't belong. Now this is probably, or is, an emergency backup light. This will probably be something that you want to order separately. I'm going to uncheck this. I do not want this to be part of my count. This is going to be a different count. Okay, just like any other thing that you do in your job, you need to check your work. Don't just assume that the software is 100% on point. Um, again, that sensitivity bar that I showed you at the, up at the top, setting it too low or too high may pick up other stuff like this. I mean, I've seen this when searching for sinks that sometimes it'll pick up like a G grid line if it's set too low. I'll just go in here. I mean, this sure is a lot quicker than doing this by hand or individually. Right, almost there. I'm going to intentionally leave one on or maybe even two just so that I can show you how if you did pick up a couple that didn't belong, you could remove them later. Wow, there's more than I thought. Holy moly. A lot of light pictures on this lighting plan in there. All right, so I've hit the bottom. We're good to go. Now, one of the things I like to do here, and again, this is just something that I do just to visually help me along the way, is I like to go in and I like to highlight the ones that I've found. This will help me visually pick up and remove ones that don't belong in the group. And then I'll show you how to get rid of all these highlights. Because these highlights are going to display on your markups list, and you may not want to see a bunch of highlights. So it's very easy to get rid of those. But the next thing I want to do is I want to apply a count measurement. Graphics are small. But there are some built-in uh, measurements along here. I can click on any one of these symbols. Or I could use the ones that are part of my electrical takeoff tool set. Thinking back to being able to put a cost in these, this is awesome. Um, so here we got the F10C. And if I click this, it's going to put one of those symbols on every single lighting fixture in the bunch. You don't have to choose or create this sort of symbol. You could do whatever you want, okay? You're free to make your own tools look however you want. But notice how those couple that I accidentally got in the bunch, oops, I made a mistake. Look at how easy it is to remove it from the group. You right click and you say, delete that one from the group. Okay, notice how when I click on one, it's all highlighted. That is a total cost. Let's look at that in the markets list. F10C, there's 130 of them. There's other columns that you can turn on, like what page is this on. Lots of different options you can do. You can also see that I've built a cost in, and I just randomly put $250. So this floor is going to cost me 
that amount right there. So by adding that highlight, I can go around and see like, oops, it didn't pick one up. The same way I removed it, I could resume and pick up right where I left off. Okay, so I'm still in the count tool now. So I can visually go around the room or around the building and I can locate the ones that it didn't pick up. there and so on and then to get out of that tool you just hit escape and then looking back at the markups list you click on that tool again you can see that it's updated by three now if you want to get rid of the highlights because you are done with them maybe you want to keep them maybe you don't totally up to you um, I can go up here and I can dumb down my markups list with this little expand and Minimize drop down. Okay, there's other things I can do. I can re-sort out this markups list by ascending and descending order. I can run a filter on here. I can say anything that is a highlight, leave on. So then I can scroll down, hold down that shift key, highlight them all, and hit that good old delete button. Okay, go down again. There's more. Holy moly, there was a lot, wasn't there? Hit that delete button and get rid of them like that. Then I'm going to clear out my filter and turn that baby off. All right, there we go. So how did I create that um, takeoff? I'm going to show you that visual search tool one more time. This time we're going to search for these lights here. So back to search, they get rectangle. I'm going to go over to a nice clean sheet. And then we got the F7 light fixture here. Go back to our whoops, go back to our page that we want to perform that takeoff on. Go to our search and hit search. So now it's searching for all the F7 light fixtures here. And the total is running down there at the bottom again. All right, 100%. Here we go. And again, you'll want to go down and check your work. Oops, I accidentally hit the blue beam there. And it looks good to me. Okay. Go in, check them all off apply a count measurement, and because I already have that particular fixture created in my takeoff, I click on it, and voila. Let's look at that in the markups list. You click on it. Okay, so I didn't actually assign a cost to this particular fixture. So I could go in there and I can manually add a cost. So maybe these are like $65 each, and boom, it automatically updates. All right, so that's pretty cool, right? So after we've done doing all of our takeoffs, we want to go in and create a report for this. And so that's going to be what we're really after at the end of the day. So in the markups list here, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. One is going to be a PDF summary, and then one is going to be something called quantity link. And the quantity link is available in the extreme edition only. So this is the summary report tool. You can see that I can create a PDF summary report for CSV, XML, and a PDF. Or you can just print one out. I'm going to start with a PDF summary report. And the first type of report that I'm going to do is going to be a report on some of the electrical takeoffs. The columns column is always a good place to start. So things that I want to see produced in my list, this is where I make that happen. So for example, I want to see the subject, and I'm going back to thinking how the subject looked in the tool set. Was it, you know, medium pressure gas or plumbing, or was it just flooring? 
So subject is important. Maybe for the uh, lighting fixtures, the length is not important, so take it out of there. Maybe the count is not important. Definitely the label, because the label is going to tell me what type of flooring that was. Conduit, um, pipe diameter. Uh, I'm going to take the cost out because I want my cost per foot column in there, and then I want the total cost. Don't care about these two objects, or these two columns. Just to kind of give you a little intro on this, this is where you can add additional files. You can run these reports on files and not even open. You can save and load this configuration, and then you can save and load this configuration as well. So if you don't want to go in and check things off each time, you don't have to. Going over to filtering and sorting, um, when you first go into this, it's going to say all, so we definitely don't want to do all. We just want to capture the lighting fixtures, possibly the conduit, um, but that's another type of report that you can do. You definitely want to go back in and turn the length column on. Let's go ahead and just do it both. Why not? All right, half inch, one inch, two inch, three inch, quarter inch, voila. Then we go over to the output folder. Before we do that, you can sort this by the label. So let's go ahead and sort it by the label. So it's going to say, you know, all the F10C fixtures and so on. Then we go over to the output. We can say that this is a lighting estimate, something like that. Where you want this saved, do you want to use a template? I'll, I'll show you what the template is after it creates it. I personally like my thumbnails to be medium, and I would like all my stuff to be hyperlinked back into my set of plans. So as I'm reviewing my list, I can click on it, and it'll jump me back to my set of plans. Uh, then I say OK, and then OK again, and I'm going to watch it um, give me a summary report on the takeoffs and the lighting fixtures. And of course, it's going to take unusually slow because we're doing this live. You know, I think it's taking a little bit longer because we're actually on a webinar, too. It goes a little bit faster um, when doing this. Here we go. This is the template and how the template looks. So if you want to put a nice, pretty little picture of your project up at the top, this is just one I kind of already had in the bucket. So. Um, many different templates you can add. It's, this is just like a Word document or a PDF. I put like a header and a footer at the, the top of the, the paper before I uploaded it. Um, okay, so here we go. We have lighting estimate. Uh, at the top here, we got the, the total length, the price per foot, and the total cost. You can see this is the one and a half inch conduit. Uh, moving down the line, we got the one inch conduit, and this is how it looks. Let's scroll down here to the actual takeoff. Nice, right? I know some of you out there are like impressed. Maybe others not so much. But let's say that we wanted to jump back over to this particular takeoff right here. I could just click on it, and then boom, it'll open up my sheet and take me right back to it. All right. Let's do one more. Um, oh, we're getting kind of kind of close on time. You guys can email me or uh, get a demo if you want to talk about this a little bit further. You need any help? Feel free to reach out to me. Um, the last thing I want to show you before we wrap it up today, guys, is the quantity takeoff. This is really impressive to me. There is going to be a little bit of setup at the very beginning. The way this works here is we have an Excel sheet. It looks like this, okay? Um, we've added some unexpected costs to the column. A lot of you are going to be already familiar with Excel. Some of this you can do the front end work before you even place the takeoffs in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a link between the PDF and the Excel file. So we're going to go in and we're going to add the files and we're going to say this this is the project we're working on, the new project, and then we say OK. It's immediately going to take us to this display box right here, and this is when the subject becomes important. So remember when we created our, our, our takeoff, we put in um, two-inch conduit, and then we put the label two-inch conduit. So we want to get the length, 
whoops, the length of the two inch conduit, oh sorry, that's not two inch, that's quarter, three quarter inch, then we say okay, boom. Go in the one inch, do the same thing. We're going to say the length of the one inch and click OK. Going in here, creating the link. Once you've created this link with these um, columns here, these will automatically be updating. And this is happening without even having Excel open. I can literally close this Excel file and go back over here into my review. Let's pop this up. Let's do the three-quarter inch. Look at the number here, three-quarter inch. Let's, let's make sure this works. And this does work too when it's closed. You'll just get a notification when you reopen it that says there were some changes that were made. So I go back over here and let's just pull this out. Come on. There you go. So we can see the total length is updated, and there's the updated total length there. Okay, again, going back, going back, and then you see the update. Same thing happens with the plumbing. I can literally go in here, say quantity length, um, go in here, and this would be the length of the label this time rather than the subject. Oh, sorry. Wait, what are we on here? Two-inch width. There we go. Waste. Nice, right? Same thing with um, fixtures. We have the F10C going in here. This is going to be a little different, though, because this isn't a length. This is an actual count of the F10C. Sweet, right? So that's how the quantity link feature works. Again, you can set all these up and have this running in the background. You can hit save. You can close this file up. When you do, let me just show you really quick how it works. When you go in, and you add a whole bunch more of those. Oh, that's not even the one we added with it. Okay. Like that. So we, we previously had 133. There was a difference between the measurement totals. Well, thank you so much for that. Right? So that's pretty neat. That's called Quantity Link. Again, it's available in the Extreme Edition. And that's just about all that I had for you guys today. So with that, I'm going to jump back over here into my PowerPoint slide. This is where we answer questions. This is where I thank you for joining me today. All right, let's see. We do have a couple questions. Is this on Extreme 2017? I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I have a suspicion that it's the Quantity Link. Quantity Link came out in 7, 18, I think, yeah. So Quantity Link came out in 2018. Can you use these takeoff lists on sessions? Takeoff lists. You mean the markups list? So yes. If you're wondering if you could do this in a studio session, but here's the process for that. You need to create those custom columns before you push a, a file into a studio session because the ability to create custom columns once it's in a session will be grayed out. Could you please send the recorded video? Yes, I can, Amir. I sure will. Oh, you know what? Quantity Link came out in 2017. So, Alfonso, yes, 2017 Quantity Link is available. And if any, nobody has any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you again for joining me today, and I look forward to the next Construction Tech Tuesday webinar. Have a good day, everyone.